The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the December 11th, wonderful Wednesday edition of the Money Masters Show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I am grateful for your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with the tools that empower human potential. Because living up to our potential, folks, that's something you and I, we must master each and every day. So let's begin our day with some empowering beliefs. You know, it's really all about thanks living. Thanks living, folks, it centers on things to give thanks for. And more importantly, a grateful mind is a mind that will eventually attract itself to great things. It's our attitude of gratitude that opens the door to abundance in our life. And thanks living, if lived on a continuous basis, well, to create more good in our life than anything else that we can possibly do. Because thanks living is a way of life. And it's a way of life no matter what our circumstances are, no matter what the challenges are that we may face. You see, perhaps the most difficult, yet the most powerful of all, is to give thanks for our problems or our obstacles and our challenges. The reason is this, as we face our situations and overcome them, and yes, you will overcome them, we become stronger, we become wiser, and we become more compassionate. Hmm, something to think about. You know, we learn mathematics by solving problems, and we prepare for an athletic event by practicing against a stronger opponent, or at least you should. Have you ever played a game of chess? Who would you learn more from, a stronger or a weaker opponent? Exactly. A stronger opponent. And we can learn more from a larger problem, too. Be thankful and be grateful if you have problems in your life, folks. There's an ancient proverb, and it goes like this. It says, a donkey may carry a heavy load of gold on its back and never know its preciousness, only its weight. Sometimes, sometimes, folks, we feel the weight of our circumstances and we lose sight of the precious nature of the many gifts of life. Adversity, when overcome... Hey, it strengthens us, and therefore, we are giving thanks, not for the problem itself, but for the strength and the knowledge that results from our experience or the experiences we are about to have. Perhaps we should give thanks ahead of time for you and I. We will grow, we will get stronger, and we will overcome every single challenge we face in life. Thanks, living folks. That's really what it's all about. Let's go see if there's anything we can give thanks for in these markets out here. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow is off 59 points. It's trading out at uh, 15,912. S&P is down 8 points, trading at 1794. NASDAQ Composite off 18, trading out at 4041. Russell 2000 off 6 points. It's trading at 1113. NASDAQ 100 down 15 points, trading at 3498. Russell 2000 off 51 points. Goldilocks is back a buck fifty. Silver is up uh, nine pennies. Light sweet crude down seventy three cents. Our call in number it is eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you give me a call, I would be happy to take that call, and we'll go bisect, dissect, do whatever we need to do to answer your question about whatever stock chart it is you have. Leading the charge of the downside is Icon Enterprises. IEP is its ticker symbol. It's off fourteen bucks, about eleven percent. Intuitive Surgical joining in on the uh, game. Brain Salad Surgical. It's off eight dollars right now, down two uh, percent or more. Laboratory Corp LH that's off eight percent. PDC Energy PDCE is its ticker symbol. It's also off eight percent, down four sixty. Biogen B double I B off three dollars uh, this morning, a little over one percent. Pharmacyclics we're going to go take a look at that because that might be coming into a uh, buy point uh, for us in the not too distant future. It's off three dollars and change right now. Celgene is off two forty. Inner Oil Corp down two forty seven. To the upside, you've got Mastercard. It's up thirty five uh, bucks. That's on news of a uh, re- of a split, not a reverse split, a uh, stock split out there. 10 to 1, I believe, is the uh, number. You've got Auto Home. That's off 
Well, that must be a new IPO because that's up eighty percent, or they're in a buyout. Yeah, that's a that's a uh, so that is a uh, that's an IPO out there. Priceline though, Priceline trading out at eleven ninety five. It is up uh, about uh, six dollars in change. Valero Energy VLP, uh, Valero Energy Partners. That is, they're up uh, five bucks, up twenty two percent. Hmm. Not uh, VLP. What is uh, that? Uh, that's an IPO too. So they must have spun something off there. Uh, that's because uh, Valero V L O is the uh, ticker symbol, right? Scripps Networks. That's up six percent. S N I Netflix is up five dollars in change. That's up uh, trading out at eighty bucks. We'll take a look at Netflix. If you remind me, Visa is up uh, two sixty seven, and again uh, the Dow is down uh, fifty three. Let's so begin on our by taking a look at our S and P five hundred. In fact, let's go see what it is trading into. Well, first here is the monthly chart for the S and P five hundred. The seventeen ninety four area 1794 happens to be a primary trading range boundary line is trading at 1795 this is the monthly chart that we are seeing here on the screen no divergence between price and relative strength not like we saw here back in 2007 at the highs not like we saw back in 2000 at the highs that says that even on any pullback here this market wants to a roar higher Wants to roar higher, wants to uh, complete uh, eventually its uh, move up to about the 2350 level. But that's a monthly chart. Let's go see what's going on in the uh, daily chart out here. A move down to about 17.95. Maybe we have a nice, real scary, you know, market that moves lower, giving us some big volume in the queues, which will end up just really setting up a nice buy point for uh, yesterday. So I say, bring it on right now. You've got the S and P. It's trading into the uh, December 4th swing point out there, the top of which is 17.99. Now it is critical. I will say this: it is critical. It is key that the low of 17.7909. Uh, we do not see a close below that. In fact, I don't even want to see a tick below 1779.09 but you know what I want is uh, different than what the uh, market will uh, give to us but right now all that's really gone on inside the S&P 500 I hate to admit this to you but what, all that's really gone on is since the November 13th wide ranging bar candle all we've really seen here is a consolidation move if we take a look at what that consolidation move looks like it looks just like uh, this in essence and that says that we're looking at a consolidation from about what 1780 up to about 1813 so that's what about a 33 point consolidation uh, that we can take a look at. That says that any move, break top side or bottom, is a, a move of about, we'll call, it, we'll call it 35 points just for the heck of it. That says if it breaks to the upside, you're going to add 35 points. You're going to be somewhere around the 18 to 50, 45 ish range. And if you break to the uh, downside, breaking to the downside, you're probably right around, what, 17. Uh, 45 or so, and 1745 would take you all the way back into the uh, November 17th uh, swing point out there. So that's really all that the S&P 500 has been doing. So in essence, since November 14th, uh, I've been trying to uh, keep you entertained because all we've been doing is been trading in a uh, fairly tight uh, trading range, and that is what's going on inside of the S&P. That was on the monthly. That was on the uh, daily. Heck, let's go see what is going on inside the uh, weekly chart. Let's go punch up my uh, trend uh, system out here. See if there's any real kind of damage being done here on the uh, weekly uh, basis as we take a look at the uh, weekly chart. Nah, it's nothing more than really a, a nice, strong. Let's get in the little cautionary zone out there. Of course, that cautionary zone was set up right here uh, by two weeks ago with the, let me put this uh, cross, cross bow, cross hair on it. That was the uh, week ended uh, November 29th. Of course, that was the uh, Thanksgiving week, a short trading week out there. A little uh, doji uh, candle. And that says that the real key here in order for that 35 ish point range move to make is going to be key to get above the high of that. Uh, Doji. The high of that doji is at 18.13.55 out there. So a uh, very bullish, very strong bullish market here on the uh, weekly uh, charts. I'm going to be hosting a uh, one hour, maybe 90 minute or so, between 60 to 90 minute workshop on December 19th. And we'll have the details up on your uh, on your uh, on the TFNN website here. I would hope by the end of the uh, trading uh, day today. But the weekly chart, nice, uh, long, and uh, strong momentum inside it. Let's go take a look at some of the other indexes out here. Let's go take a look at the uh, Dow. In fact, let's uh, uh, go take a look at the uh, Dow. Let's use a couple of systems out here. Let's use uh, Basil's uh, peak counter because I've got that built into the uh, system here. So here we're taking a look at the uh, Dow. It's got the uh, nine-day exponential moving average. Those are the uh, blue squiggly 
squiggly lines on my uh, screen. I've also got the uh, horizontal primary trading range boundary lines uh, picked out. Now, I've developed a system here that automatically does that work for me. That way I can put up any chart and we can figure out what those uh, PTR levels are, mid-PTR levels. And we can also uh, go ahead and count the uh, peaks and troughs here. If we start with the October 9th uh, session here, Let's go uh, run that. We'll do the count on the uh, way up. And you can see here that uh, what the Dow did was at the high on October, I'm sorry, November uh, 29th uh, on Thanksgiving. It made that uh, peak D. In my case here, I'm just using numbers to uh, uh, to come up with the uh, numbering uh, system. So A, B, C, D is 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm just doing the four-step move out there. Now we can see is the uh, real key here inside the Dow is going to be it's trading inside the December 4th uh, swing point. We'll take a look at the ETF structure here momentarily. A real key is going to be the 15,791.29. If there's a close below 15,791.29, then what the uh, daily is uh, telling us is you would see a, a change in uh, trend take place out here inside of the Dow, and that would really hold true for the S&P 500. But that's what's going on inside of the daily chart. If we go take a look at what's going on inside the uh, weekly chart, let's punch that up on the screen. Let's go take a look at the Dow. We're going to probably see, and uh, not probably, we're going to see a, a similar picture to what we saw inside of the uh, S&P 500. Nice, strong move out here. you got a nice big old hammer candle on a, the week of October the 11th out here. Strong level of support inside of the Dow, about 15,717 or so right now. Now you're trading out at 15,919, so that would be 200 points to the uh, south out there. You get below uh, 15,717 ish, uh, that could present a, a problem because now you'd have the daily and the weekly uh, giving you a, a shift in uh, trend that uh, would uh, the Dow would be undergoing. But not until we get there. Of course, what does the monthly say? Well, if we take a look at the uh, monthly chart here for the uh, Dow. That is going to show us uh, long and strong out here. In fact, if you utilize this system that I'm going to be sharing, I'm going to be teaching on December 19th out here, this would have had you uh, in the uh, market the uh, month of uh what is this, November, let's see, yeah, December 2009, and you never would have been out for your long-term trading capital. This is not intended on a monthly chart here. It's not intended to sell the uh, top tick nor buy the uh, bottom tick out here. But uh, momentum, if the trend is your friend, which I believe that it is, is why I've spent so much time developing this system out here so that it would help people. Uh, you know, 70% of the listeners out there, I know what you're doing because I get the emails from you. You've got those long-term holdings. You've got those 401 ks you've got those iras and you're wondering what should i be doing well this is the uh, system this is the ultimate system that'll tell you what is going on inside of the uh, market it makes it a whole lot easier you know, the daily stuff it's just fun to listen to the show but it's nothing more than uh, noise if you are managing your long-term funds if you're managing long-term funds don't be making your decisions off of a daily chart Mm. That would be like trading daily and making your decisions off of a 10-minute chart. You can't do that, folks. You've got to stay with inside the time frame of what it is that you're uh, managing out there. So that is what's going on inside the Dow. Take a look at all three time frames. Let's go see what's going on inside uh, maybe what is the weakest uh, link here in the market. Then we'll take a look at the strongest link. Let's go take a look at the Russell 2000. Let's go see what it's doing on a uh, monthly uh, chart out here, Must monthly chart. This is nice and uh, long and strong out here. We haven't seen any kind of a uh, sell signal really well you get a buying opportunity all the way back in uh, this was what uh, september september of 2011 right now the dow's off 66 s p down eight we'll be right back folks With over three decades of trading experience, Andy Hecht brings a tremendous amount of knowledge and expertise to each weekly issue of his newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. The Technomental Commodity Report gives you Andy's unique technomental analysis of the commodities market, a combination of technicals and fundamental analysis which he has developed and perfected over his many years of trading. The Technomental Commodity Report is only $49 a month, and right now you can get a full month-long trial subscription while paying absolutely nothing. See for yourself the kind of weekly report Andy delivers to his subscribers every Thursday morning. You'll receive specific stock, ETF, and option trades based on Andy's analysis, so no futures account is required. For all the details and to start your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, Visit TFNN.com today.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, right now, we've got the uh, Dow is off 63. The S&P is down uh, 8 points. Uh, the composite off 17. And we're just going to take a, a quick peek here at the uh, futures uh, contract. I've got the 30-minute chart on my screen here. We can see that it's in the process of forming that 0 .618 Gertley buy pattern. In that 1794 level, you're trading at 1793.25 uh, uh, as we speak here right now. Uh, the market, that rubber band is uh, stretching. It can stretch just a little bit further to the uh, downside here, but uh, we should see now that first rally that we see coming off of this little snap uh, down. That's going to be important for us to be paying attention to out here at the moment as we speak. Let me see here. We've got a, uh, let me see if we still have a price uh, relative strength divergence. 26.38, where are we at right now? We're at uh, nah, 24. I'm going to say that that pattern, well, we've got to wait for this 30-minute bar here to uh, complete, which is another five minutes. So uh, can't tell you whether we've got a, a divergent pattern out here inside. That would be that would be a little bit more bullish to the uh, move out here as we take a look at this move lower. Now, that's on a 30-minute chart. Uh, staying below 17.94 is a not a good thing that is not that is more bearish than bullish inside of the market but let's trade over let's trade over let's uh, switch over to a uh, 120 minute chart we want to really be paying attention, in my opinion, to this chart here this is the nasdaq futures now this is the uh, this is the uh, January no this is the uh, 
Z. This is the Z. This is the December contract that we're taking a look at. And if you come off of the open down here uh, back in October, uh, that level is at uh, thirty-one seventeen. Uh, you can see that that begins the rising price channel. So right around thirty-four eighty-two or so. And the reason we want to be paying attention to the Nasdaq, the Nags, Nas dog out here, is because this is where the real strength has coming is coming from. And if we were to see a failure here, that would send off a, a larger message in side of the uh, markets. We're not really getting the uh, the combination here with regard to this sell-off inside of the uh, Euro-Japanese yen as we take a look at that uh, currency pair. So it has not taken a little bit of a beating like the uh, uh, as the uh, as the ES Mini has here right now. So a little bit of divergence there. Yeah, it's pulling back here over the course of the last uh, half hour, but uh, nothing that seems to be uh, too great. So we've got a couple of patterns that are setting up here inside of the uh, markets, and uh, I, I do believe that a, a nice move lower would be nothing but a nice scary buy opportunity. But got to take it things one one moment at a time. If we take a look at volume inside the markets out here. Let's go see what kind of volume we've got so far. An hour worth of trading. Let's take a look at the diamonds. Let's go see what uh, they are uh, doing out here. Diamonds so far. Trading back, pulling back with 1.9 million shares. Now, it's going into the trading session from uh, December the uh, fourth out here, and that's got seven million shares out there. So if we were to take that level out, the level being the low of one fifty seven eighty three, that would actually set up an A to B equal C D down. At this stage here, what we'll be paying attention to is that little that little trend line, the top of the trend line, coming off of the May 22nd, 2013 a high. That was a key reversal session. We're going to use. The uh, key reversal session also from November the uh, 7th as our touch point, the high of that bar, 157.80. That's that little red diagonal line going across our uh, screen out here. So that's what's going on inside of the diamonds. Where's that price point at? I can't give you exactly, but somewhere probably right around 158.30 uh, or so inside of the Dow diamonds. If we take a look at the IWM, IWM has been the weakest of the uh, indexes. It is taking on the December 4th uh, swing point. The low there is 110.37. You're trading out at 110.51 right now. Volume so far today, 9 million shares going against 40 million shares. So pretty good volume in the uh, first hour. If it can take out that, that would be setting up a potential A to B equals CD down. That would look like this. It would take you to about 109.33. That would be your 1 to 1 A to B equals CD out there. Uh, big volume right at around that level, which is on the trading session of November the uh, 1st. I don't know what occurred on November 1st. I don't know if that was a rebalancing act or something going on inside of the IWM, but you got 117 million shares there, and that's a real number out there. So finishing up at that A to B equals CD down at 109.33 is uh, should be some pretty decent support. 109.63 is the top of that bar from November 1st. Let's take a look at the uh, SPIs. The uh, SPY right now trading trading out at 179.80. Uh, it's trading inside the uh, swing point from December 4th. That has 123 million shares. So far this morning, 23 million shares. So during the first hour of trading, volume is uh, pretty good out here. So long as the low of 178.35 from December 4th is not taking out, then all we really have here is just a little consolidation, as I said, uh, since really November 13th. Just a little sideways box consolidation out there. Inside of the S&P or the SPY, I should say, the consolidation runs from about 178 all the way up to a high of about 181, 182. So about a three and a half to four point move out there if the consolidation gets broken. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. 
for all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's uh, trading off 74 points right now. Russell 2000 off on uh, 9. That's the leader in the clubhouse on the way down. It's off about 9 tenths of a percent out here. And I've got the 10 minute chart on my uh, screen so we can take a look at an intraday. IWM is the uh, chart that is on my screen here. And right now, price is going against a uh, little hammer candle low that was out here. High volume bar. This is from the trading session at uh, 1340, so that would be, what, 140 in the afternoon. And that was on December 4th. Volume on that trading session, 2.8 million shares. That bar is being attacked with what? Light volume. 1.5 million shares as we were going into the 1030 session out there. So it's being attacked with light volume. It is the bottom of a, a hammer candle if, in fact, this area holds and creates a... Uh, a, a bullish uh, candle because we are in what we'll call the extreme uh, oversold uh, uh, territory. Here's where we'll be paying attention to a, a message. Now, it can close below that, and it can still form an A to B equals CD down. Uh, that would then likely form a, a Tiger Gartley out here. But let's take a look at where that A to B equals CD down. Again, it's a 10-minute chart that we are trading off of, but we can certainly learn off of this 10-minute uh, chart out here. The 1 to 1 A to B equals CD down would take you to about 109 uh, 34. Again, the B point is at uh, 140 in the afternoon, December the 4th, the low of which is 110.37 out here. Now, 
If it were to break that level on lighter volume, make a run to 109.33, it would then be running into its next sign of strength out here. That sign of strength took place at the open. Let me uh, pull this back here. We'll widen up on the screen. Let's uh, find out. I imagine it's the open. Uh, yeah, 9.40 in the morning. That was on uh, November 21st out there, and that is that had volume uh, on the uh, trading. Well, the, it was the close of the trading session, I, I apologize, at 4 p.m. on November 20th. That had 3.9 million shares. Nonetheless, let's take a look at the retracement off of that swing point low because that was a major swing point out here. And if we go from the uh, low of that session all the way up to the high that was uh, put in, that's probably November 29th, right? Yeah, November 29th out there. Let me see if I can, if I've got the right low out here. Yep, there we go. The point six one eight level takes you about 110, 110.01. That's really about where you're trading at right now. So the one to one would be a hundred percent move of a move back into that little uh, breakout area. So we'll see if this is going to hold. Here's where our, really our first release of information is going to uh, come from. And that is coming from the, uh, from the IWM, which is the weakest of them. So we're going to be paying attention to the weakest as well as the strongest as we were looking at the uh, NASDAQ uh, futures out there. Let's go to Andre in uh, Houston, uh, Texas. This is Andre. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Hey, Steve. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing great. Hey, now, did I know Dallas got nailed with that uh, storm and all that ice. How about you guys in Houston? Did you get hit with that as well? No, we just it, it was just nice and cold and a relaxing weekend. That's all it was down here. Oh, good, good, good. No snow, no rain. Okay, good. So it made, driving was no problem. No, 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 not at all. It was just uh, I work for UPS, and we, we got... We got slaughtered because of that uh, snow up there in Dallas. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good now though. Okay, good. Now, is it, is that does it does uh, UPS is all their stuff come into Love Field or where does it come into or does it come into the uh, main Dallas airport up there? Yeah, it, it's the main Dallas uh, airport, but it, it's it? not just the uh, those are just the air parcels, the ground parcels as well. That's like a major hub for Dallas. Ah, if you through Texas. And because yeah. of the streets were so, you know, with sleep, yeah. the wheelers couldn't make it down here, you know, to be safe. So they had to hold it up there for a while. Man, not not what you want during the holiday season, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> hard work, uh, hard work, hard work. Yeah, I hear you. Hard work's good. You <laughs> want to take a look at the uh, S&P futures, I think, right? Um, yeah, um, I wanted what's to it? bring something to your attention, actually. Uh, what's what's the was, time frame uh, that you're looking at so I can get to that chart? Um, it's actually, you can go to S&P 500, I guess it would be great. Um, but what okay. I did was um, I went over the uh, planetary aspects over the highs and lows Okay. S&P 500, and I found a correlation, and it's, it seemed like it's forming today. Okay. But I'm not sure. On the 21st of May of this year, um, you had uh, Mercury uh, Square uh, Chiron, and I noticed that Chiron was always, a uh, reflection point in price throughout the whole model besides like a, maybe like one time. Okay. So on this aspect of Chiron um, Square, I mean Mercury Square Chiron, but also it was the first quarter of that week of the actual moon cycle, so I overlapped that as well. Mm-hmm. Well, that same aspect came in um, this week. Uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, t- yeah, when, yeah, today, t- today at uh, four thirty-three a.m. So really, it came in last night at about uh, eleven thirty in the evening. So the twenty-first, when that kicked in, uh, we were we looked at a, um, I think it was a six percent um, correction mm-hmm. uh, in the market at that time. Mm-hmm. And my question was, I was anticipating that, but I didn't get a signal yesterday. I was really expecting a signal. Yesterday, today actually looks like an actual candlestick signal, but the volume isn't following through with that. My other indicators aren't following through with that indication. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So from your thinking or standpoint, what would you do even though I've looked at my cycle patterns throughout the chart? Well, the the first thing that I would do is, and I can't do it, I wish I could do it for you on the air. Maybe what I'll do uh, tomorrow, Andre, if I, if, I, if I have time today, is I'll go pull all of those aspects. So I've got the ephemeris for, I've got 300 years worth of data, not that I need it, but hey, 
I got it. And uh, so I could I could go take a look at uh, for us here at uh, TFNN. I could pull out all of the uh, Mercury Square. Let's see, today's the eleventh. Mercury Square Chiron. I could take a look at each of those aspects and then immediately apply them to a chart. Now I would go back and I would apply it to the Dow since my data goes back to 1928. And we could apply each of those aspects and then determine whether or not uh, it is a uh, coincidence, whether it uh, has a high probability of showing uh, turns or, or not. So, you know, when I first, personally, when I first started the journey down taking a look at uh, planetary aspects, lunar aspects, whatever they were, you know, I, I'm the type of person, uh, for those that know me, I, I don't have any problem doing the work. In fact, I want to do the work. I never want to take anybody's, um, I, I want to I read and learn, but then I want to take what they say and actually go prove it to myself uh, okay. and see if, you know, see if there's an edge for me. And so the easiest way for me to be able to do that, and, and, and part of that was trying to identify significant market tops, something that right. might occur before a crash, just anything that showed a significant reversal. So that's why I went out and I built a program and went ahead and paid to get the uh, ephemeris, you know, in a, a digital format. And they created the program that I could apply to a, a stock chart. So the I, the answer to you, so I don't, because I have not mapped that specific um, planetary aspect, I can't tell you whether or not, um, uh, whether, whether you know, what, what the meaning behind that is. And part of the reason is, is most of the work that was done on that, uh, or, or uh, any of the, most of the work that was done on pre previous planetary aspects did didn't consider Chiron because it didn't really come into the ephemeris until a few years ago. So there's really been no, there's really been, to, to my knowledge, there's really been no work uh, done on it. So I'll try, I'll try, I'll get that done over the course of the next couple of days. And is it the 10 o'clock show that you listen in on or is it the next um, 9 o'clock show? <clears throat> I listen to both. It's just trying to juggle schedules and trying to give you a call that I really meant to call you yeah. earlier in a week. I just I couldn't do it, but I did notice just Chiron period, not just that specific aspect, but Chiron period, it, it had reflections on the lows and the highs. Okay. So I wrote down everything from 2012 all the way up till now, as well as what is Chiron, Chiron expected to do uh, going into uh, the end of December because it's going to be, uh, you know, what are looking at seeing whether there's going to be any retrograde planets as well because that can throw off any pattern because anything's going in retrograde. Yeah, but it's no. But something that to give in research. So when you were when you were looking at okay so when you were looking at the aspects so you were just looking at the major um, the major um, aspects meaning uh, square trine opposition Correct. sextile and conjunction just just the main core is Correct. that is that and, and every uh, time I did that it kept it, Chiron just kept popping up on the time it didn't was I think it was uh, Neptune Neptune went retrograde on the uh, what's that uh, June first. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was Jupiter too. Jupiter in retrograde on a uh, low on uh, November seventh. So that was the only time that Chiron was not respected um, mm -hmm. within the pattern that I was looking at. From um, I think I started in March of last year. Okay, yeah, it, from March of last year up till now. That okay, it, so it has been respected some kind of way. Yes, no, no. So that's that's great information, folks. When 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 uh, Andre's talking about, you know, uh, it was square, which normally carries with it a. Uh uh, you know, a tendency of being uh, bearish where, uh, and it's really just an angle. So square, obviously, 90 degrees. Sextile is just referring to a 60-degree angle of the planetary alignments, and those are typically bullish. And trine is also bullish, which would be the opposite, or 120 degrees. And opposition would be 180. And, uh, you know, the uh, work that... Uh, uh, Donald Bradley did it. Didn't it? Only included uh, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, and then obviously the Sun and the uh, Moon out there. So you know he didn't take into consideration Ceres and Chiron. And the ephemerises, all the old ephemerises, didn't have that uh, in there as well. So uh, what I'll be able to do, again, I'll try to do it today if my schedule. I just can't do it while I'm live on the show. Go to that database and uh, pull out all of those aspects. But I will pull them out for it for you, you know, and I appreciate you calling and, and, and we'll take a look, we'll, we'll map them, because it'll show exactly the day that it falls and it'll map it on the uh, Dow, so I'll just use the uh, Dow you know, for our, our, because I can go, because I'll go back many years, because we want to, what, what I have found, uh, Andre, is that in order to really have a good sample size, you need at least 70 of something, 
you know, uh, and and in order to because otherwise, you know, and and it's easy to go map those out and 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 then we'll determine. You know, I don't know whether the valent the val- valence uh, whether uh, sextile and trine whether the valence of being bullish or bearish whether that has an impact. We'll just take a look at it. We'll map it on those days and see if it really does provide you know a, a trading strategy. I would say right now one of the best that uh, works, and I think we covered this, but if not. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, since since you've been kind enough to uh, share, I'm going to share with you, and that is that moon conjunct uh, Pluto, and that one really works well, and uh, and it really works well when you tie it into, and this is identifying highs and lows when you tie it into a, a new or full moon that occurs within a 24-hour period of when that actual uh, cycle occurs, and what we had out here was on December the uh, 4th, as the markets were moving lower, you had on December 3rd was the uh, new moon, and on December 4th was the moon conjunct uh, Pluto. Mm-hmm. And what you and what you had was a nice low there. Last time that we had uh, a low come in with the market moving down into a, a similar uh, similar set of uh, cycles happened to be the full moon as well as uh, moon conjunct Pluto, and that was on June twenty fourth out there. Wow. So with the market moving lower, that, that's going to be important. I can't say that it's going to hold. I don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, obviously, I, w- I wish I could tell you the future. Uh, you know, I, I would, you know, I'd give everybody lottery ticket uh, numbers, you know, in different, st- I mean, I, I would be Santa Claus and I would be happy to, uh, oh, to, you know, to do that. But, but what it can do is we can pay attention to uh, cycles that occur, see what they have uh, done out here. And that market was clearly making a low in the, in, on December 4th. And so we'll see if that area, you know, holds out there. And that was on the uh, moon uh, conjunct, uh, uh, moon conjunct uh, Pluto out there. So, uh, so check back. Uh, uh, what I'll do is uh, tell you what you send me an email, all right? Okay. And then I'll respond back to you when I know that I've pulled all those uh, pulled all those uh, um, uh, uh, pulled all that data together. And that way uh, you'll know which show. And that way you can also listen to the archive if you can't catch it live. All righty. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it, Steve. Hey, no problem. My pleasure. And thanks so much for calling. Have a great day. You too. Bye. All righty. That was Andre in uh, Houston, and what I'm going to do, folks, I'm going to pull all the aspects of uh, of uh, uh, that that are occurring today. What he was pointing out, which was uh, the uh, Mercury square uh, Chiron out there, which is a, a major uh, a major aspect for us to be uh, paying attention to. Uh, just as long as I'm on here uh, next uh, next Tuesday, Uranus goes direct. For those of you that wanted to know that, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Let's go back and take a look at the because it was a ten minute chart that we were looking at uh, uh, before uh, Andre had called. We were looking at that hammer candle on the IWM. So so far that hammer candle has held. It was tested here with some uh, light volume at that ten forty session. It was one point what was it one million shares? It was uh, yeah one million, just over one million shares going against that hammer of 2.8 million shares we'll see if this is a area that is uh, going to uh, hold out here in the marketplace we use uh, basil chapman's uh, trough counter out here we'll start with the high the high that I will use is our C point of the potential A to B equals CD down starting at 12.50. That was on December the 6th out here. So let's go uh, do that little countdown and see where we are at. Looks like we are in the, uh, see, was there an instant, as Basil calls it, an instant restart? No, not necessarily it wasn't. So you're at that uh, what would be a trough E out here as well coming into that uh, hammer candle. Right now we've got the Dow is off 72. S&P is down 10 points. So we'll be right back, folks. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. 
you'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You know, we were taking a look at the 10-minute uh, charts on the uh, ETF uh, structures out there, and I don't do that uh, too often out here. Uh, but what was interesting, and, and if you're watching this on Tiger TV, the four quadrants, I've got the uh, upper left is the diamonds, upper right is the Qs, uh, lower left is the SPY, IWM. So we can take a look at, uh, we were taking a look at weakness out here. That was the IWM. And what I was uh, benchmarking that was against the uh, hammer candle that formed, and that was at uh, December the 4th at 1.40 in the afternoon. So we know that price is going up against the weak hammer, uh, that hammer candle, which is a, a strong area of support from a, a bullish standpoint. We can see that price is also in the extreme uh, over uh, sold uh, territory, and it's coming in there with light volume. Now, that is the weak link out here, because if we take a look at the uh, queue, so on any kind of market bounce, if you were a, a intraday trader and you said, okay, uh, no moss, no moss to the uh, downside, uh, what the uh, queues have done, benchmarking the same hammer candle, it also formed at 1240. 
I'm sorry, 140 in the afternoon on December the 4th. You can see the low there inside the accused, 8478. The high that was put in was that uh, uh, 1130 in the morning. That was on December the 9th out here. It's only made a point three eight two retracement. So you can see a lot of uh, strength here. Uh, not really even, well, maybe there's an A to B equal CD down that you could find out here, but only having made the point three eight two retracement and volume here, uh, you know, as it moved down, no volume to speak of inside the uh, queue. So nothing of significance there. Now, if we take a look at what's going on inside the spies, the spies have at the same level, meaning... And this doesn't really qualify as a hammer candle. It's pretty close. But that same time period at 1.40 in the afternoon on December the 4th, too much of a shadow on the upper side of that candle for that to qualify as a hammer uh, for me. But nonetheless, we'll use it as a swing point. And you can see what the uh, spies have done. They've made a nice .618 uh, Gertley uh, buy pattern. Now, the key here is going to be the spies at least closing above, uh, in my opinion, at least the body of the candle that t took place at 10.30 this morning. That is the open there was 179.90, but preferably you'd actually like to see it get above the high. Excuse me for a moment. Uh, 18011. So that's what's going on inside an intraday chart for the uh, spy out there. And let's finish this off. Let's take a look here at the uh, diamonds. We didn't do the diamonds, right? No. Uh, so the diamonds here, they also have formed the uh, .618 Gurley coming off of the uh, same swing point candle. Now, that also does not look like a hammer. The body of that candle is uh, too big. Nonetheless, we're benchmarking the exact same time period, which is 1.40 in the afternoon, the swing point that is down there. So you can see the spies, a .618 Gurley buy. The, uh, Q, the uh, diamonds, a uh, a uh, uh, .618 Gartley buy. The IWM, the weak one, up against a hammer coming into that with light volume, and the uh, Q's only making a, a .382 retracement. So the Q's are very strong out there. You know, had uh, yesterday... Uh, Z had given me a call asking me, as we're going into the end of the hour, asking me, hey, on the NDX 100, where did I see an area of resistance or a target? You know, kind of makes it hard to do when you're up into a new territory. Uh, you know, where, well, I won't say completely new territory because we're taking a look at coming off of the highs in 2000. In fact, if I come off of those highs in 2000, uh, all the way down to the low that was put in in 2009, what you'll see is we're well above the 0.618 area, which was 3280. That's says 39.55, which is your .786 retracement area, says that that's where it really wants to uh, probably head to. Uh, the overhead resistance that it does have, the overhead resistance here, the next primary trading range boundary line that's out here is at 36, we'll call it about 36.15 or so, and it looks like that is where uh, it is headed to. This is the monthly chart out here. You can see there is nothing bearish about this uh, chart as we take a look at the NDX 100. If I take a look at the uh, weekly chart out here, can I do that real quickly here? Weekly chart also not really showing anything of any kind of uh, significant top that is in place. Hey, folks, have a, a great Wednesday. Stay tuned for a great lineup today. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Take care. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.